Welcome back. Right now, we're going to have a peek into what is happening in River State. The political climate seems to still be very volatile, and we're being joined by a former CPS2, the deputy governor of uh, uh, River State, and also the publisher, CEO of Krishna uh, Reports. Good morning, and welcome, Mr. Godswill Jumbo. Yes, good morning. Okay. My pleasure of being here. All right. Now, we've, we've heard reports about uh, policemen occupying some places, uh, you know, belonging to one or the other. We've heard uh, rumors also, uh, or news rather, also of two plenaries having, holding at the same time people um, loyal to the governor and others loyal to the Federal Capital Territory Minister, that is uh, Yeson Wike. And we thought that after the apology, after the, it is a father-son fight and all that, there will be no problem anymore. Bring us up to speed. What really is going on in River State? Okay. Early morning yesterday, we, we saw policemen who barricade the House of Assembly complex, and we learned that uh, the matching is only really less uh, faction of the House of Assembly uh, were sitting. And then later we saw press release. You know, camp also that they also sat and uh, they passed on, passed the vote of confidence and the governor. Now that's uh, two factions of the same House of Assembly uh, sitting. And uh, previously, the police was providing cover for one of the factions, you know. And incidentally, this particular faction, the speaker has purportedly been impeached. And then there's also a streaming order on that faction not to go ahead with the attempt to impeach the governor. And we saw that happen. And then later yesterday, we saw an originating summons with, with an order from the Federal High Court by Justice, Honorable Justice Ayua, you know, putting an injunction that all both parties should, uh, should uh, suspend sitting, you know. So, uh, and so the issue raised in the originating summons you know, have been taken care of, have been addressed. So in a way, that's where we are now. We also know that at the back end, a lot is going on, you know, on, on both sides, you know, to push the, the different agendas. Uh, but I, I think for reverse people, for reverse people, they are, in a way, please, it's, the community, we think the governor is going about you know, what he's doing uh, by focusing on governance. We've not seen him after that incident of uh, October 30th, uh, the 31st. Uh, we've not seen him like the only other thing he has said was that it was a father son issue and it will be sorted out, you know. But we've not seen him distract, you know, deviate from the issues of governance, that's at least what has happened. So that's where we are now. Uh, so people have also like drawn the attention of the police high command that the police is supposed to be an independent, you know, neutral party in this circumstance. So providing cover, security cover for one faction of the House of Assembly uh, that's like jumping into the arena. And I think the IG, uh, Dr. Ibotokun, needs to look at that. You know, the, the place was damaged. There was a fire incident there, and the governor, you know, is looking at fixing the place. So why would the police that are supposed to provide security for the state in general even allow anybody, anybody at all, to go sit there without the authorization of the Chief Security Officer of the states. These are some of the issues that are, you know, uh, coming up with the developments. So this is where we are in University as of now. 
But what is the leadership of the River State PDP and the national body saying about what is happening, really? Okay, uh, we, we've not like had any comments from the national leadership of the PDP or the APC. Uh, apart from the intervention of Mr. President back then, we've not had anything else so far. Uh, the only other person who has spoken is the FCT minister, who has said uh, if he wants, he will show the governor paper, he will suffer even if he does not win. And these are rhetorics that shouldn't be coming from somebody like him. Uh, there is a general expectation in River State that, you know, having by virtue of the fact that he sat on that seat as governor of River State for eight years, he is now in the class of statesmen of River State. So everybody expects that fatherly posture, that statemanly posture. You know, that elder statement, the posture, that's what everybody expects Wiki, and yes, Wiki, at this point, you know, to exude. He should not, he's not supposed to jump into the arena. The children fighting, the boys fighting, ah, all his uh, boys, he made them House of Assembly members, he worked to bring them up as governor, as speaker, as whatever. So at this point, everybody should expect that, uh, everybody's expecting that he will call both sides to other uh, young men, get back to work, leave all this uh, drama, you know, but we don't see that happening. So maybe I can use this uh, opportunity to speak to him directly, you know, that he should rise to the occasion. He is, as it is now, an elder statement of an elder statement in the United States as a former governor of the state. He should be able to douse the tension. The governor has shown the economy, the governor has shown focus, the governor has shown maturity. He has refused to be dragged in any direction at all. He has focused on governance. And I can tell you that River State needs the peace, the stability that it can get. In For eight years, economic development was in abeyance. For eight years, there was no economic stimulant no investment, not agriculture, not anything, just political rhetoric, you're fighting this, you're not loyal to that, and you know, young people were being made to wear t-shirts and free scarf for eight years. And the governor is trying to jumpstart the economy of the state. I think uh, anybody who loves River State, starting from Yeso King himself, who says it's River's first, River's interest is primary in his you know, uh, categorization of interest. Everybody should focus on supporting the governor to jumpstart the economy of the states. Uh, where are the jobs? Even those who are working for several years, some of them were not paid, pensions were not paid. There were no economic stimulants. The state needs to get back. You know, look at the supposed mate of River State, Lagos State. Look at what Lagos State is becoming. And now it's River State. And we're still having this issue PDP, APC, PDP against itself, PDP against APC, and, you know, higher. So these are the things. So, uh, and it's good we also raise this issue. The national leadership of the party, the PDP, and even the APC that uh, Wiki is uh, having breakfast to it, should rise to the occasion, should call everybody to order, you know, for this. This needs a political solution. All stakeholders in whatever capacity should be able to say no. Get this off the table. Let's get back to governance. Elections are over, politicking is over, and all of that. Let's get back to you know the track of you know implementing governance, implementing the dividends of democracy. People need jobs, people need uh, stimulants to be able to, you know, fix back their businesses and reverse people are actually enterprising you know actually enterprising you know look at him going to songai farm to look at the possibility of uh, you know restarting the songai farm songai farm was taking almost fifty thousand workers and imagine what that does to the economy of the state there was a banana farm at a local government 
that was doing 10,000 workers. You know, look at that. What about the Che farm? What about the shoe factory at Bori? You know, these are things that were put in there by the previous government that we inherited. What did it do to sustain them? You know, and for the government to think of restarting this and several other things that needs to be done. Look, look at the heavy potentials, the economic potentials, investment opportunities that River State, you know, possesses. What is being done to reactivate them? So, so do we have the time in River State to begin to do a cat fight, a foul fight, you know, that kind of fight that cocks in the village do in the morning? You know, two, three cocks will come out in the morning and start fighting, trying to assert supremacy on that particular day. Then the next morning, they will start afresh again. We don't need that in river states. We don't need that in river states. Everybody, every stakeholder should be able to call all parties to order. And for, you know, the uh, uh, A.H. Edison come, I think A.H. Edison is being intentional because his own side of the state, the Orashi region, is bereft of development, bereft of the, the, the impact of governance. For how many years? You know, criminals have been parading there, you know, kidnapping, burning cars, you know, killing people and all of that. So you can understand his intentionality in trying to, you know, act in the interest of the state to calm the situation down. And I think that uh, his uh, brother and colleague, Martin Samuel, should be able to also draw from that. What has he query gained in terms of critical developments, in terms of strategic development? The, the, all of the query, Emoha, query, Potakot, Udiapo, where do you have the, the query people? What have they gained in terms of development? You know, apart from flyovers that uh, you are on top of the flyover, traffic is free. Under the flyover, traffic builds up. Apart from that, what else? So I think that both camps of the House of Assembly is time, you know, to drop, to drop the, the, the fight, sheet their sword, and get back to supporting the governor and drive mainstream, mainstream governance in River State. That is what the state needs now. And for me, it's discomforting that the leadership of the PDP, the leadership of the APC, the federal government, you know, they're not taking a definite stand on this. And uh, for, for the commissioner of police in River State, he just arrived. And two, three days after he arrived, his men are going to provide cover for a faction of the House of Assembly. What are they up to? Is that the agenda why he came to River State? Everybody should work for the good of River State. If the economy of River State is jump-started, even the police will benefit. Even the police will benefit. So these are the things that we need to put out there for people to focus. Nobody benefits from political crisis. Nobody. It has never happened, and it will never happen. And then I also need to put it on record that no governor of River State has been impeached, and it doesn't appear that Sim Fumara will be the first. Wiki had all the you know, apparatus of a federal of the federal government, federal power as we call it. Able to do that with all the powers at his behest. Was he able to do that? He himself got into office with Amechi at the federal level and Amechi having been the DG of the APC and Buhari campaign. Was he able to unseat Wike as governor of the state? It, it has never happened, and it's not going to happen. And any attempt to make it happen will put crisis on the streets of River State. And the streets of River State are not friendly, are not friendly at all. We know what River State went through in 2015, and this is not what should repeat. This is not what should repeat. Well, River State is, you know, in the same status with Kanu, with Lagos, with other economic hubs of. In Nigeria, in fact, it is the oil and gas capital of Nigeria. Is that where we should be stoking crisis? So these are the posers we need to look at. I, I don't know how the APC is going to wade into the matter because your your spoil might be there again. Uh, so I don't know. They may be praying that it should continue. But this just gives um, uh, yes, a picture. It gives a it, picture it, that it, possibly it, the PDP house in, uh, in, uh, in River State is divided against itself. Because even if the national, uh, national body of the PDP doesn't come to the, to the aid 
of the uh, reverse people. The local uh, leadership of PDP should have waded into the matter enough to make sure that uh, uh, this problem is brought to the ground. We were just talking before you came on board about the role of political parties in governance itself. And this would have been a very defining moment for the people or the leadership of PDP in River State. Are you telling us, or can you confirm or deny, that uh, the Rivers PDP uh, leadership is divided, just like the House of Assembly is divided and the, um, the governor and the minister are fighting now? So are they divided or are they still one? Uh, well, we can say yes, and we can also say no. <laughs> In the sense that it is reverse people that po populate PDP. And I think I said it the last time you uh, invited me here, that reverse state has always been PDP. Mm -hmm. Every exp experimentation with any other party has not worked. It has not worked. It, 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 they tried different parties, it didn't work. Even under the Amechi administration, the Amechi railroaded everybody, all of us that were serving in that government, you know, railroaded us into APC. I said, now, where are the APC people? All the stakeholders, where are they? They are back to PDP. So, River State is PDP, just like Lagos is APC. You know, they, they, there are states that you just know where the political alignment is. It's just there, you know, latent, you know, uh, how would I put it, consolidated. You can try any other thing, but it won't deviate from that. Imagine the go states all of a sudden under PDP. Well, but we, found, we saw that kind of a thing happen in Cross River State. Cross River was always a PDP state until Ben Ayade came and, like you said, railroaded everybody into APC, and it has continued in that trajectory. They are now APC. So couldn't it happen in, in Rivers? Okay, Ben Ayade did that while he was on seats, not after he has left. Ben Ayade did that while he was still governor of Cross River State, not after he has left. So you cannot be on the seats. A river seat is PDP. Then now you are out of the seats and you want to use your stooge to move river states to APC. Uh, well, at the center of all of this, that is what is there. Because the APC is insisting that the FCT minister should move. He should. He has benefited from the party, so he should cross over. But being the kind of person he is, we know him, he wants that clout, he wants that uh, you know, uh, demonstration of capacity. So he, he doesn't just to work singly, only him, and maybe with a few, you know, lackeys uh, to be able to see. He wants to come with the government, he wants to come with the executive, the House of Assembly, everybody, and, you know, the senators, House of Rep members. You know, you heard him saying the other day that he bought uh, election forms for everybody, you know, in River State. So that's where, that's the crux of the matter. But the, the thing is, like I'm saying that, you know, we can say uh, uh, PDP is divided because it's not everybody that wants to pander to that. Some people uh, disagree with that, but they also are not, uh, rivers people are not uh, flippant that I don't like something, then I come out and start talking about it. So that's what we're having, you know, a latent dissent, latent dissent, like, People don't agree with what you are telling them, but they are not speaking up. They just want events to just play out and you find out that they don't agree with you. So that is where PDP in River State is. A lot of the majority of the members of the party are not agreeing to move into the APC. APC has not been beneficial to River State. With all that Amechi put in for APC, River State suffered, if not the most, under the APC government. There is no footprint, no developmental footprint by the APC anywhere in River State. They just did little cosmetic. When you talk, they will talk about the Bonibodo Road. The Bonibodo Road is being done by the NLNG. It is not an APC team. It is a company trying to fix up, you know, 
uh, structures to, you know, mainstream to optimize its business uh, prospects. It is not an APCT. So there is nowhere in River State you say, okay, look at what APCT did, look at what APCT did. The NDDC is not here. In my community in Boni, that from Boni, a lot of companies, Shell, Mobile, NLNG, Telema Oil, Total, all of them are making so much money and contributing their 3% to the NDDC. Boni has no footprint of the NDDC. They talked about uh, doing a deep support. It is not there. They just came, did some inspection, checked one or two things, and left. Nothing. So, reverse people will not will not be drawn willy nilly, you know, bundled together like you put fish in a basket and carry them to the APC. So, they're not flowing, they're not coming along. That's why the, 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 the FCT minister, I think, believes that because the governor of the East is boy, if the governor gives his word that this is where we're going, everybody will follow because. That is where the bread is coming from. But that's not happening. Even the governor himself, is it comfortable going to the ABC? Where will we benefit him the most? ABC or PDP? Mm. You know? So it is not happening. That is why there is this friction. You know? And the friction will continue. And at the end of the day, amounts to nothing. This is River State. River State is not just any state where you just pack people. Okay. You know? Imagine with the developmental profile of Amechi, with the political clout of Amechi, with the, the street credibility of Amechi, he could not sustain rivers people in APC. Okay. So, well, let, let me, you let me now just, compare the comparison. Yeah. Uh, our, our time is up, but if you can confirm or deny, just a yes or no answer if it is possible. Uh, a lot of talk has uh, gone round that Amechi is trying to return to the PDP. Can you confirm this? Okay, as far I think you asked me this same question uh, last time. And uh, as of then, we are still watching. Uh, but I can, I can say for sure that with what is going on, with what is going on, it is very clear that if not by his own intentions, a lot of stakeholders across the Niger Delta want him back in the PDP to provide the leadership the PDP needs to be able to move at the speed it should move. The PDP is the only party that has benefited river states mm. and across the Niger Delta. Check Bayasa, check Delta, check Edo, check uh, other states. PDP is the party that has, you know, done this thing. I'm a journalist. I watch from the spectator stand. I'm not... Uh, I'm not politically biased, but I'm just telling you from observation, this is where it is. So, yeah, they're dragging it, Amechi down. Amechi actually is, you know, is more interested in leaving the political scene. Okay. Let the players and actors do their thing. But the influence is heavy on him to come back and provide the kind of leadership that PDP needs. So that's where the, we are. Okay. And that is also at the, you know, the undercurrent. The heart of the uh, matter. Uh, behind see. the crisis in River State. I see. Okay, thank yeah. you so much, Mr. Jumbo, for coming on the sh uh, show this morning and giving us insight into what is happening in River State. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. Okay. Uh, we've been talking with Mr. Godswill Jumbo, former Rivers CPS to Deputy Governor. He's also the publisher and CEO of Christina, Christina Reports. And this is where we wrap it up on the show this morning. Uh, until we meet again tomorrow for another edition of the show, my name is Nyamgul Agadji on behalf of the team saying thank you for being there.